exposing Hamas, Naso 5781. Remember in high school, we were always told you have to have good segues when you're right, good transitions between different ideas. Well, it seems like God actually missed that day in school. We're talking about Truma and Ma'aser, mandatory donations given to the Kohen and the Levim to support them. And the next minute, we're speaking about the Sota, Weir's Venet transition. First of all, who is the Sota? She's a woman who's accused of adultery by her husband. Her husband suspects she's having an affair with another man and says, I do not want to hear that you're secluded with this man. I think you're having an affair with him. She is then seen by witnesses secluded with this man. They go into the Holiday Inn, they close the door, the blinds are shut. Nobody saw what happened, but they are seen secluded. Now, if they actually were witnessed having an adulterous act and they were warned beforehand not to do it, they'd be liable for the death penalty. But here we're, they're simply witnessed in seclusion. At this point, she has one of two options. She can accept a divorce, but not get any of the money she would ordinarily get in the case of divorce because of her problematic behavior. Even though we don't know she committed adultery, she had improperly secluded herself with another man. So she would forfeit that. And in the ancient world, that would be traumatic for a woman because women were dependent on men financially. And unless she had parents to return to, she could be out in the street penniless. Or her other option was to undergo the Sota ordeal. That is, she'd go to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem, to the Beit HaMegdash, to the temple, and drink the waters of the Sota. Now keep in mind, if you're a farm girl, and suddenly you're being taken to Jerusalem and to the temple in all its grandeur, it is an overwhelming or inspiring place. It's like being taken to the White House. Wow, this is incredible. So there in the temple, a Kohen, a priest, would take a cup of water, a piece of paper, write God's name on the paper, put the paper in the water, the paper would dissolve, and she'd drink the water. If she truly were guilty of adultery, she'd explode. The Talmud explains this is mida connected mida, measure for measure. Before actually exploding, first her fingernails would fall off. Why? Because she gestured to her lover like that, come over here, seducing him with her fingernails. Her hair would fall out because she played with her hair to seduce her lover. Then her thighs would distend because she spread her thighs for her lover. Finally, her stomach would explode because she welcomed her lover upon her stomach. She suffers measure for measure. However, if she's not guilty of adultery, she's reunited with her husband. The relationship is restored and they have a child. Now, first of all, this whole procedure seems strange and by our standards, certainly sexist. Keep in mind, by the standards of its day, it was feminist in nature, be, nature because it was giving the accused woman an opportunity to prove her innocence and let her to return her let her to return to her station by her husband's side. But the larger question is, what's the connection between the Sota and giving Truma and Maaser the tithing? The Talmud and Brachot makes the connection for us. It says, if you don't come to the Kohen and give your truma, you don't give your tithing, you don't give your tithes, then you're going to wind up standing before the Kohen anyway, because your wife is going to become a Sota, and you're going to have to bring her to the Kohen in Yerushalayim. So what it's really saying is, pay your taxes, give your contributions up front, and you'll avoid the trouble of having to bring your wife as a Sota. It's like saying pay your taxes now so you don't get audited by the IRS later. The larger message is pay your fair share. In the spirit of that message, I sent out a letter to the congregation earlier this week. It's entitled Israel Under Attack. Let's do our part, our fair share. It reads, Shalom Chaverim, the Matzah, the situation in Israel deeply troubling. 
Again, our brothers and sisters in Israel have been forced by terrorists to run to bomb shelters. We must show our solidarity with our fellow Jews who are in the front lines of our battle, the battle to preserve the one Jewish state. Not only is it important that Israelis see diaspora Jews supporting them, it's important that we feel that we're supporting our Jewish homeland. I'm asking that you donate to my discretionary fund so I can make a generous contribution to the Bayit Brigade on behalf of Addis Koda Shell Emma. The Bayit Brigade helps lone soldiers. These are people, courageous people, men and women, who move to Israel and serve in the army despite the fact they don't have family in Israel. I've chosen this organization because of the wonderful work it does and because there's also a Delaware connection. Mara Seidel, the daughter of Jeff and Diane Seidel, who made Aliyah, works for Rabayat Brigade. By supporting this organization, we're supporting Israel and the Olim, the immigrants who move there. Aaron Lyon, the president and founder of the Bayat Brigade, just reported, we are taking steps on the ground to support our soldiers. We have one new soldier that was called to Gaza within the last 24 hours. He was in the process of moving and was, and was unable to even unload his possessions into his room. We're working hard to furnish and complete his room so he'll have personal space when he returns where he can rest and regroup. It's with the ongoing support of our donors that we are able to ensure everything is in place for his heroic return. Thank you. I say thank you for joining me in showing support for Medinat Yisrael, the state of Israel. Todaraba and Am Yisrael Chai, Rabbi Stephen Sachs. For details on how to donate, see our weekly newsletter. We have a role, that's the point, and we have to step up now. This is the time to act. But unfortunately, people at times try to evade their responsibility. What do you think tax evasion is? People are trying to evade paying their fair share. Moshe Rabbeinu and Devarim has a warning for those people. The hidden sins are for the Lord our God. In other words, you think you're going to cheat your fellow? Think again. Even if you pull a fast one over your fellow, God will hold you accountable. The Talmud demonstrates this in a story regarding the Sota. A woman commits adultery. Her husband calls her on and says, I think you're guilty of adultery. She doesn't want to take the divorce and wants to protest her innocence, even though she's guilty. She has a problem. She's guilty, though. However, she has an identical twin sister. The identical twin agrees to go to Yerushalayim and drink the Sota water. And she, of course, won't explode because she's innocent. She didn't commit adultery. So the identical twin goes to Jerusalem, drinks the Sota water, passes the test with flying colors. But she has a little water still on her mouth from drinking the Sota water when she returns to her sister. She gives her sister, the adulteress, a little kiss. And some of the water from her lips, the Sota water, winds up entering the mouth of her identical twin, the adulteress. And the identical twin, the adulteress, explodes. In other words, you can't hide from God. But as we also say, Sometimes God, even God, needs a little bit of help. And in this case, we need to help because Hamas is attempting to conceal the truth by making moral equivalency between their actions and the actions of Israel. It's a boldly mendacious claim. It's a lie. And it's meant to take advantage of those who are ignorant of the facts of the situation. Now, we can't wait around for God to expose Hamas. This is our job. Therefore, I sent a second letter to the congregation earlier this week. It reads, Shalom Chaverim. Please see my letter below regarding the terror assault on Israel. I've sent it to our senators and congresswomen, and I'll be sending it to the News Journal and the Jewish Voice, which I did. 
please consider signing your own name to this letter and sending it to our senators and congresswoman. Toda Rabbah, Rabbi Sachs. And here's the content of the actual letter. President Biden is to be commended for affirming his unwavering support for Israel and Israel's legitimate right to defend itself and its people while protecting civilians. However, dispatching Hadi Amar, but now Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Palestine to de-escalate the fighting between Israel and Hamas undercuts Biden's unwavering support. Amer has said that he was inspired by the Palestinian Intifada and accused Israel of ethnic cleansing and apartheid. Furthermore, by restoring to the Palestinian Authority the funding that had been suspended because it was being used for terrorism, Washington has sent the message that the Palestinians will again not be held accountable for their terrorism. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan stated that he has serious concerns about the potential eviction of Palestinian families from their homes and Israel's behavior on the Temple Mount. But the rent dispute in the Sheikh Ja'ar district of Jerusalem, in which Palestinian tenants are refusing to pay their Israeli landlords, was just a pretext, not a justification for launching deadly missile attacks upon Israeli civilians. And Israel's police only went into the Alaska Mosque after had it turned into a theater of war, a place to stockpile rockets and petrol bombs that were hurled at Jews and police. Now, to his credit, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has emphasized there is a very clear and absolute distinction between terrorist organizations, in this case Hamas, that that indiscriminately rain down rockets upon civilians and Israel's response in defending itself. Israel, he continued, targets terrorists who are raining down those rockets upon its civilian population. Lincoln is correct. So I say, therefore, Israel should not be criticized for the higher number of Palestinian casualties. Israel makes every effort to protect its own population and to limit collateral damage as well. In other words, to save Palestinian lives. Hamas, on the other hand, launches missiles from civilian areas behind schools and hospitals and apartment buildings in hopes of not only killing Israelis, but in hopes that Israeli retaliatory strikes meant to take out these rocket launchers will kill Palestinian civilians. Blaming Israel for harming human shields hands Hamas a propaganda victory and only encourages them to sacrifice more of its own people. The Biden administration should be urged by members of Congress, first of all, not to appoint people who have a track record of making anti-Semitic remarks. Two, not to provide funding to the Palestinians until they forsake terrorism. Three, not to tolerate false moral equivalents. And by the way, by signing the letter, I'm not asking you to endorse Israeli policy. You may feel that the Israeli government has made mistakes in the lead up to this conflict and governments do make mistakes. What I am asking you to do by signing the letter is to reject moral equivalence. A property dispute is not reason should not give one permission to rain down missiles upon civilians. And we also must reject the idea that both sides are guilty of human rights violations. Israel warns Palestinian civilians to vacate an area before they strike. The Palestinians deliberately target Israeli civilians while using their own civilians as human shields. Details on how to send these letters are also found in the weekly bulletin. Chaverim, friends, this is a Hanani moment, a moment to stand up and say, present, I'm here to help, to do 
my part. Let's answer Hineni.